My name is Dr. David Wetter, and I'm a professor of dermatology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Our article is entitled, Subacute Cutaneous Lupus Erythematosus, Clinical Characteristics, Disease Associations, Treatments, and Outcomes in a Series of 90 Patients at Mayo Clinic, 1996 to 2011. This article will appear in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. There were several important findings from our study. Approximately one quarter of the 90 patients with subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, SCLE, had an associated autoimmune connective tissue disease, although severe sequelae of systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, such as nephritis, were rare. In addition, the frequency of drug-induced SCLE increased over the time of our study period. Finally, the majority of our patients with SCLE responded to first-line treatment with hydroxychloroquine. In terms of causes of SCLE, the majority of cases were idiopathic, while 12% were felt to be due to drugs. Interestingly, the majority of the drug-induced cases occurred during the final six years of our study time period. Overall, nearly 30% of our patients had an associated autoimmune connective tissue disease. 14% of patients had Sjogren's syndrome. Of importance, 20% of patients met American College of Rheumatology criteria for a diagnosis of SLE. However, only one of these patients had lupus nephritis, and none of the other patients had serious systemic sequelae of SLE, such as renal disease, neurologic disease, or hematologic disease. Our study has several important practical clinical implications for providers caring for patients with SCLE. First of all, our study suggests that the incidence of drug-induced SCLE is increasing over time. We hope that these findings will help spur increased vigilance for the diagnosis of drug-induced SCLE. Secondly, we found it interesting that even at a tertiary referral center such as Mayo Clinic, nearly three-quarters of our patients responded to first-line treatment with hydroxychloroquine. This suggests that providers should ensure that their patients with SCLE have had an adequate dose and duration of treatment with antimalarials before proceeding to other treatments. In addition, nearly 30% of our patients had an associated autoimmune connective tissue disease. This underscores the importance that patients with SCLE need to be evaluated initially and longitudinally over time for not only development of systemic lupus, but also for other autoimmune connective tissue diseases such as Sjogren's syndrome. Moreover, the ideal way to monitor laboratory studies of patients with SCLE for the development of SLE over time remains unclear. Our findings that show only rare development of serious systemic sequelae in SEL patients who developed SLE may be helpful in guiding clinicians on how best to monitor their patients for development of SLE over time. Our study has several important findings for patients. First of all, all patients with SLE need to be assessed for a possible drug causation of their disease. Secondly, all patients with SCLE need to be assessed for the development of systemic lupus, as well as other autoimmune connective tissue diseases such as Sjogren's syndrome. Thirdly, even if patients with SCLE develop SLE over time, the risk for serious systemic sequelae is rare. Finally, patients with SCLE tend to do very well over time and most respond to first-line treatment with hydroxychloroquine. We hope that our study's findings spur additional research into SCLE. Specifically, Further studies that assess for potential clinical, laboratory, and treatment differences between idiopathic SCLE and drug-induced SCLE are needed. Additionally, we are hopeful that our study will spawn further evidence-based recommendations regarding laboratory monitoring of SCL patients over time for the development of SLE. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you find our article interesting and educational. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.